I call the Honourable Clayton Cosgrove. Mr Speaker, um, that was a, a speech which rivaled the Prime Minister's in that it was um, skeletal, I think, in its lack of substance. It was at best underwhelming, uh, at worst barren of any uh, plan or substance, apart from a fleeting reference that life is good in New Zealand because we've had one hell of a good summer, and that is true. The weather has been great. Mr Grocer even managed to take credit for that. I thought that belonged to the deity and Mother Nature and other powers that be, but Mr Grocer seems to think that the weather is within his gift to give. Um, sir, uh, Mr Grocer talked about the fact that the government had been accused of third-term-itis, and he asked for some facts to back up that thesis. Can I give him a few? Richard Worth, Pansy Wong, Judith Collins, and the former Member of Parliament, Mr Saban. I'll say no more. Sir, they are facts which bear out that the standards that the Prime Minister went to the country with, and it is true, he won a phenomenal election. He does have a mandate, his government does have a mandate to govern. And people, it would seem, did and do, but did believe the promises that the Prime Minister and the government made. When the Prime Minister talked about higher standards, when the Prime Minister talked about lifting the Parliament beyond a place it had been for some time, the community, indeed, believed him and voted for him. Sadly, uh, in recent days, and what we see playing out uh, within Sir our judicial system in respect of a former Member of Parliament, does not bear that out, does not bear that prom promise out. In fact, it is contrary to the commitment that the Prime Minister made. But I'm sure the facts around that situation and the minister, various ministers' involvement in it will come to pass, as they always do, uh, in the cleansing nature that is the parliamentary chamber. Sir, um, Mr Grocer also talked about employment and waxed eloquently about how wonderful things were. He, he made a point which I thought was stunning um, in its arrogance, in that he said that people, the communities, do not understand the fundamentals of an economy. That was his thesis. A number of ministers have made that comment over a number of years. I think that comment is made at their peril. People, sir, do indeed understand the fundamentals of an economy. They understand that fundamentally, in order to gain security for your family, uh, in order to gain wealth and have a good and decent life, you need a thing called a job. That's a fundamental that the communities in New Zealand, the 46,000 more uh, people who are, who are unemployed since this government took office, there are 46,000 more people unemployed since when this government took office, those 46,000 people, sir, and the other thousands of people who are unemployed, they do understand very clearly that the fundamental you need to survive, let alone prosper, in our little economy is a thing called a job. And I note that our leader in his State of the Nation speech uh, was quite fanatical uh, about the notion that the Labor Party, uh, its very being, will be devoted to providing uh, low and the lowest unemployment uh, on our globe. And I note that the last Labor government, of course, achieved that, the lowest unemployment from 2004 to 2008 in the OECD. That's a fact. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. And that's something that Andrew Little has committed himself to return to, not what we have today. Communities also understand the fundamental proposition that in order to survive, that in order to grow with your family and achieve uh, wealth uh, and have a decent life, even if it may be a modest life, you need a roof over your head, something called affordable housing. That's something that this government was in denial uh, about since it came into office. And we now have the grand plan in respect of housing that has a couple of elements to it. One with the special housing units, and Dr Smith got up uh, day after day last year talking about the number of consents that had been granted in respect of housing. That may well be a, fa a factual truth, but of course a consent, as Dr Smith would know, is simply permission to build. It is not uh, the completion of a built dwelling. And we know, I think it's 15 houses, 15 houses have been built as a result of the government's special housing unit. Now, by built, for those opposite, I mean built 
certified so that people can move into them. You know, Not a piece of paper that says, you may build a house developer, and that developer or whoever else may sit on that piece of land for two or three years. A piece of paper called a consent, I would argue, would not keep the rain off like an iron roof in a built house would. But maybe that's a fundamental that the Minister of Building and Construction doesn't quite get. So I would disagree with Mr Grosser. People do get it. They understand that to have a good life, fundamentally, you need access to a decent health system when you need it. And we know what's happening there, and we know the stripping of resources that has occurred over time thanks to the government. We all know because the people come into our offices for assistance, very rare that people come into your office as an MP um, you know, to sort of dish out a bouquet of flowers and say everything's wonderful, more so that people come into your office because they have an issue, because they have a problem. So fundamentally people know that if they are to survive and they are to prosper, you know, in the nation that Mr Key outlined, the prosperous society or whatever the slogan he used, they need a house, they need a job and a sustainable job. And one, they need a job that just doesn't allow them to tread water, because I've never met people who just say this is as good as it gets, especially parents wanting, uh, wanting better things, as every generation does, uh, for their kids to do better. Not just any old job, but a job where they can grow, where they can gain promotion, where, where they can gain higher income. They want to do better in life. And they believe this government, as far back as, 90, as uh, 2008, when Mr Key and his, his then uh, shadow ministers talked about the prosperous society, ambitious for New Zealand, those sorts of things. Well, that ambition seems to have crumbled into mediocrity, crumbled into sort of treading water and lapsing from crisis to crisis, bout of amnesia to bout of amnesia. And the people who are lost in all that in the internal machinations of the, the National Party as it does embark on third termitis, off the back of, yes, a large mandate, but third termitis has taken effect pretty quick, uh, the people who are lost in all that are the people that this government and this parliament are charged and paid for to serve our communities. The lost and lonelies and those people who struggle each day to survive, who hope that the promises that John Key made over three elections will at some point come true. If ever they, de they leave their preoccupation with their own uh, foibles, uh, their own discredited ministers and their own MPs and former MPs who do not bring, as we sit here today, a great deal of credit to this parliament. The government needs to come up with a plan which is outward looking, not some sort of battle plan to hold the line as they have done since the election, which is inward looking, which is inward looking and myopic. And it does centre, sir, around jobs. It does centre certainly around housing. Uh, cities, towns, up and down this country. Every night you go, you watch the news, and there's another series of stories about younger people, and not so young people actually, who just cannot get into that property market. And what we hear from the other side is that their best shot for those at the bottom of the heap is to transfer ownership from the state system to the community sector or the private sector. Changing ownership from one entity to another, selling a house from one entity to another, does not build one additional house, does not increase the housing stock one iota. It may do if the guarantee was that the proceeds from those sales, all 100 per cent of them, went back into a regenerated housing stock. But we know, and at least I suppose the Prime Minister has been honest about this, that he said he will in no way guarantee that the proceeds from those sales will go back into the housing stock. I suppose that's slightly better than the Bolger government pre-99, who sold thousands of them and never made any commitment uh, and never said anything and frittered the money away and not, not one dime went back into renewing the housing stock. But I say this, I'd like a member to explain to me how transfer... ..and increases the housing stock overall one iota. All it does is relieve the government, sir, of responsibilities, and that seems to be the biggest policy plank, the relieving of responsibilities that we see time and again from this government. I understand the next calls a split call.